everyone, and welcome to Another Bite, where we rewatch the most innovative and intriguing pitches from Shark Tank. I'm Jory, and I'm joined by Ariel. Hey, everyone. And John. How's it going? Today's episode is all about having your cake and eating it, too. That's right, because nobody wants to have your nasty post-candle spit all over their icing. That's gross. The Blowsy aims to make that bacterial nightmare just go away. But first, here's an ad that will blow you away. You know it, we know it. Next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success in 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. And with over 1,400 integrations, there's a ton of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com forward slash sales. Today in the tank, we have the Blowsy. And Blowsy comes to us from Mark and Mark. So we've got the team of Marks. And they are asking for $100,000 for 20% in their business, which is a $500,000 valuation. Their company is the Blowsy, which is a spit-proof mechanical candle blower. So you know those little fans that you get in the summertime? Basically what this product looks like is one of those fans mounted on a straw. And when you blow through the straw, it hits a sensor in the fan that then propels the fan through a battery to, instead of you slobbering all over your cake, blows out the candles for you. So important to know, this pitch was in 2021. So this is also very much like a concurrent pandemic product, but essentially it's trying to reduce the levels of bacteria that kids and adults get on their cake. We get this fun statistic that when you blow out candles on a cake, it increases the bacteria on the cake by 1400%. But you know, it's good for the immune system, rub some dirt in it. So Definitely a product that is based on the societal norms of what's acceptable hygiene. And this product kind of came about because both of the Marks have young sons and they have witnessed the slobber fly. So they use their engineering and supply chain management know-how to build this product with a utility patent. So thinking about the Blowsy, the pitch, and our founders, what are your initial thoughts? I think this is perfect for children. But for me, it's borderline novelty gift. So I'm kind of mm. mixed on this one. Yeah. That's I'd fair. probably classify this like Mark and Mark missed the mark. Probably nice. what I call this pitch. Oh <laughs> I mean, sure. 1,400% increase in germs. Sounds gross. But it's cake. Who cares? Cake's good. Yeah. I love cake. You too, as a parent, could ruin the lovely tradition of having your children attempt to blow out the candles on their cake. I just looked at it and I just thought like, oh my gosh, this is a problem that just does not need solving. It's true. There's a lot of germs that come from kids' mouths in particular. Kids are covered in each other's germs. That's all they do all day is cough and hack and lick things and touch those things into their eyes. Walking it's petri dishes. Okay. And so like, this isn't like solving mm -hmm. the germ problem for kids. I think all it does is make parents feel comfortable eating the cake. And I've been to some birthday parties where I've chosen not to eat the cake. I've seen the blowing and thought, I'm not eating that cake. Oof, that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like every parent wants the photo of their child blowing out the candles on their fifth birthday cake. And that's such a great photo to get and you treasure it forever. And I just can't imagine what it would look like if in that photo they had a giant blue cigar with a fan on the end of it in their mouth to blow out their candles. It looks like a kazoo. It's a kazoo it, yeah. with a fan on it. Have you ever seen kids fighting over blowing out the candles? For that reason alone, I think for multiple children households, this will be a game changer because like with my nieces, I know they'll push or they'll like try to get closer to like <laughs> Violence. the cake. Okay. You know, they get a little, they want to blow it out first and it's a competition with their sisters. So like, I do think for multiple children households, it could be a game changer. And I will say that, you know, for all that it feels like a novelty product, some of Shark Tank's biggest success stories yeah. are novelty products. So yeah. that's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. You can make a lot of money but on it's limited. a one or two time run of a novelty product. That is definitely true. It's not necessarily a sustainable long-term business. Not always the most sustainable thing to invest in because unless you're charging a huge amount of money, 
you know, your margin is not going to be that high. I don't know. My sense is the timing for this actually would have been like September 2020 would have been the money time to get this live. I actually think uh, it came out in October 2021. That's already getting a little late where people were loosening up on COVID. They missed the boat. So I think that might have hurt them a bit. For all that it is like a novelty product, it is a one product business. So they don't have extensions of this product line beyond colors. And potentially, I think what they're going after with Damon is like licensing. Do you think that that actually hurts them in terms of like not only the timeliness of COVID, but like how long they can actually last as a company? Yes, definitely. I think they're pigeonholing themselves by just focusing on one thing. I think that technology, though, of having like your spit valve essentially live somewhere else could be utilized for other products. Like the first thing that came to mind is like a bubble blower, for example. You be around little girls, they love bubbles. We love a bubble moment. Being able to blow and have the bubble stuff come out without it like dripping everywhere or like getting a mess all over the floor. I would have loved to see this manufacturing technology be utilized for product extension. I mean, it's super tricky. I'm not sure even if you did a line extension and leveraged your fan technology for other use cases that it actually would like matter at all for your business. Like, I think you'd have to make the market for each of those use cases. I think they're discreet enough. Hmm. You're not seeing like drum pants potential yeah. here. <laughs> oh, Bring it up drum pants. Drum pants, everybody. Drum pants. It's a good flashback. <laughs> yeah, I just think each use case they would go into here, you know, would have to make a new market. And I don't think the technology is actually like that innovative. It's just Mm -hmm. a sensor and a fan. The thing that is innovative about it is the use case. And that's what made the market, not the technology. So I think they're going to be super pigeonholed. Mm -hmm. But I bet a lot of people bought them. I bet a lot of people were like, oh, yeah, this is a great idea during COVID. We should totally do this. Especially after the show aired. I could see this being one of the instances where like their sales like took off into the right and then dwindled. And did they, Jory? Time will tell. Tell me! But we, I'm not telling yet. So we did see this pigeonholing kind of play out in its numbers because as of the tank, they're only getting like $12,000 in sales, right? Mm -hmm. So like to your point, John, were they selling a lot of these? That said, though, When they were on the tank, they had only been in business for five months. So it seems like more of that October timeframe was when they ideated this product rather than started selling There's a certain amount of like, they just may not know how to take a product to market, which is totally legitimate Mm -hmm. for an inventor not to how to take a product to market. And it's a perfectly Mm -hmm. good reason to come to Shark Tank and ask for an investment is to say like, can you help me sell millions of these? The sharks are more often than not, if there's product market fit, going to say yes. How would you market this? So I think they mentioned they relied a lot on earned media and PR. And that's actually something I wish they kind of dug into a little bit more closely because I think there is a lot of opportunity within like the mommy bloggers, family vloggers, even any of that kind of content, like showcasing even like the, you know, Instagram influencers of children or family. Just, you know, have a few Instagram posts or like a video of it. And I think people would buy on to it, but they didn't really go into their marketing strategy that much. They just walked away and said, we're going to scale our market and make it better, which got under my skin a little bit. Yeah, I would probably consider like a partnership strategy here. Like I would probably do a partnership with Mm. a bunch of like children's mask companies, like mask manufacturers, stuff like that. Like parents who are in the market for goods to protect their children's respiratory and during COVID and everything. And like maybe just like that'd be like a checkout add on, you know. Or hospitals when kids can't celebrate their birthdays, they can have a little like. You had to take it there, Ariel. You know, germ free. Make me cry. Yeah, to make you cry. I had to take it. I'm already seeing like the St. Jude's commercial, like soft music in the background. And then the blowsy comes out. (laughs) A blowsy. I like that idea. Yeah. To be morbid. (laughs) That is a good idea. Let it be known. It is almost never me. Ariel starts this. (laughs) Ultimately, though, not to (laughs) blow the light out of this business, the sharks just didn't find this product very interesting. They weren't a fan. (laughs) <laughs> wow. They thought it blew. <laughs> Amazing. This founder wanted to it was have his cake not and eat it too. Guys, it's just not investable. So, <laughs> so ultimately, Blozy walked away with no offers in the tank. And, you know, Kevin was particularly ruthless. He was like, you know, I, I hate your products. You're bad marketers. <laughs> this is just not going to sell. So, very on brand. Kevin was not thinking of the children. So, I do have a company update that is kind of thematically set. Um, So after airing, Upside is, you're actually correct, Ariel. They sold out of all of their inventory, right? So there was like a massive uptick. And in fact, they sold out of all of their inventory in less than three hours. So 
I think that there was a market that existed that was like amazing. We want this product. But something that Rob alluded to was this is a product that doesn't have a lot of repurchase potential. So while there was definitely an uptick in interest, it doesn't look like those people came back to rebuy the Blowsy. As of 2023, it seems that the company is actually no longer active online. So I tried to do some hunting, couldn't find recent updates from them. So their website is down. The product is completely taken off of Amazon. And some of their social channels have been completely closed down. So for all intents and purposes, it looks like they're no longer a company. That remains to be seen. Couldn't find an official announcement of closure. In the end, even the Marks said nosy to the blowsy. It's like we're marketers. I love that. (laughs) Today's episode was written and produced by the mythical Matthew Brown. Additional support comes from Melanie Romero and editing from Robert Hartwig. If you're a fan of the show, meh. Even if you're not a fan of the show, tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to support the show. That does it for me. We'll see you next episode here in the tank for another bite.